What was your reaction to this unprecedented move by the NCAA? Well, in, in one vein, Kevin, I was not surprised because that is where this entire uh, thing has been trending. I mean, this is, was declared by the World Health Organization today to be a global pandemic. So, and, and I know that they are looking to avoid uh, a spike in this to where they can flatten the curve and this could overwhelm our healthcare system. Uh, so I was not surprised that the first step was uh, to, to decide not to play in front of fans. The only surprise that I had uh, was on a much, much smaller scale. One that, that Mark Emmert said that I made this decision, not we, that I made the decision. Uh, that was interesting. And then the fact that it wasn't coordinated among the conferences, it was just announced by the NCAA. I mean, there, there are conferences, the AC, I'm at the ACC tournament where they're just about to tip off for their evening games with fans. The Big Ten is, is tipping off with uh, their evening games with fans. Uh, it's surprising that that was not coordinated with the conferences so that uh, the decision could be made uh, together and everyone could decide uh, not to not to play in front of fans. It just looks a little odd that the governing body makes this decision for a uh, an event that is more than a week out and the events by members that are being played now uh, are being played with the NCAA decision as a backdrop. It just looks a little odd. OK, now let's talk about the situation you're moving forward. No fans in attendance. You lose that ambient noise, the vibe that is synonymous with March, right? Where will we see the biggest impact for players, coaches in game situations here? Well, if you go to the secondary concern of just the playing of the games themselves, the, the players and the coaches are going to have to bring their own energy. They're not going to be able to rely on the atmosphere and the fans. And it will certainly be different for all of us. But but clearly, and I know we all agree with this, all of that pales in comparison to the uh, the public health concerns here and the reason that this decision was made. Uh, who knows where this is going to go? It's it's the, the first step. Uh, the, who knows what happens? I, I, I just don't know. Uh, th there's certainly more to learn and more to do uh, as, as these events unfold, and, and maybe decisions will change going forward. I don't think they're going to change to have fans, but they may, may change toward cancellation. Who knows? Yeah, we'll, we'll see how this plays out, of course, as this is a very fluid situation. So the one thing I know we can talk about is potential games, and considering how crowds, they love the underdog in the early rounds, that is, of course, that is the signature of March Madness. What kind of impact could this have when it comes to upsets here next week? And, and again, I'm not ignoring the fact of what we're dealing with. I'm just talking about the things that we do know, and that is game situations next week. That's a good question. I hadn't really contemplated that. I mean, it, it's probably been a long time for most of these players to have played in a, in a gym in a real game without fans, maybe AAU or something like that, or these closed scrimmages where they're expected to play at a high level, uh, but, but there's nobody there to see it. Uh, so, it, look, it'll be an adjustment for everybody. It'll be an adjustment for, for broadcasters. It'll be an adjustment for, for people watching on television. Uh, and the biggest adjustment will be, uh, be for the players and the coaches. You know, it, it, it's interesting in, that ba in this backdrop, you know, it's a so it'll be a sobering atmosphere, too, because it's not going to be lost on the players why the, the gyms are empty. And, uh, and there may be questioning saying, hey, wait a minute, wh why are we out here uh, when, when health concerns are at this level? Uh, th those are some questions that are going to have to be answered for the players uh, also because, you know, the players are going to be in close contact with one another. And the idea that, that somehow, you know, that it wasn't going to be spread from the fans to the players, mm -hmm. it's going to be spread player to player. That's an excellent point, too. How will they approach uh, defense and playing in this scenario? You, you can't avoid the human issues in your brain when you're thinking about something like this and, and when you're watching these early games next week or hypothetically let's just say later on this week how these players interact what are you going to be watching for in the ACC tournament. Well I'll, I'll be watching to see what decision the ACC makes going forward. I mean there are fans there are going to be fans in the stands tonight for the two games. Uh, don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and what's going to happen uh, going forward in the tournament. So th that remains to be seen. Uh, but in these, in the, certainly in the games tonight, I'm going to be looking first and foremost to see how North Carolina is going to do against Syracuse. But but this is hanging over everyone, and everyone shares the same concern, and that's the overall uh, health and well-being of everyone involved. Want to make sure that the right decisions are made so that uh, uh, that everyone's health is taken into consideration, especially yeah. the players. And as we mentioned here at the top, health is the biggest concern. 
concern. The games are a secondary, but it is an outlet for many people watching at home and also in attendance. Jay Billis on the NCAA deciding to only have essential staff and limited family attendance for the men's and women's basketball tournaments. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app and live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN+.